Um, our first speaker uh, for this session is Matt Hopkinson. He's from Massachusetts, not Vermont. I think it says Vermont on it, and I, I, I told him I would clarify that. <laughs> uh, Matt is a bridge builder, uh, uh, so he tells me, and he, he said his crowning glory is replacing uh, 14 bridges in 10 weeks on a busy highway running into Boston without causing any commuter problems. <clears throat> I think we need him here in Toronto, because <laughs> cause when a bridge goes out, it's five years. <laughs> And it causes all kinds of commuter problems. Um, by his own admission, Matt says that he specializes in odd canoe trips, mostly in Maine. Um, and uh, he's going to talk about one of them today. I, I, when I plan a canoe trip, I look at routes that people have already gone on. I think when Matt plans a canoe trip, he thinks of routes that nobody else has ever thought about. Um, and he's got skills that a lot of us don't have. He not only paddles, but he sails, and he pulls, and he has to portage like the rest of us. <laughs> um, so um, Matt's going to talk to us about his uh, uh, latest trip, I think, in, in uh, Maine. Um, yep, hello, everybody. Uh, I was uh, pretty pretty pleased to hear from these guys. They, they, uh, oh, how's that? Oh, I can hear it. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, I was I was pretty pleased when I, I got a call from these guys. They they uh, were looking for someone to give a talk, and I figured, well, if they if they're going south of the border looking for people, they must be scraping the bottom of the barrel. But um, <laughs> you know, happy to help out, and uh, so here I am, and and. Um, well, I figured if I've given you a talk, I'd, I'd draw you a little picture of what I did. So um, right here is, uh, here's the trip we took. This was about a dozen years ago. Um, we started up on the St. Lawrence Seaway. Uh, city of Quebec could be a little bit off the map there. And uh, we ended up down in Penobscot Bay on the coast of Maine. Um, originally, our plan was to make it to Casco Bay. We have a house there, and, and it seemed like a neat spot to end up. But we took it as far as we could. And uh, so this is, this is this little dotted line here is, is the route we took from uh, top to bottom. It took us about a month. And uh, um, so anyway, what's the inspiration for a trip? Well, this is pretty much how all of our adventures begin. I'm sitting there explaining to my buddy Doug how great I am. And, <laughs> He'll, he'll listen to me patiently, and, and then he'll explain to me how he's far superior to me in just about every way there is. And uh, so anyway, about the time this photo was taken, I, I don't know what we were cooking there, but we were sure, sure doing a great job of it. Um, we were just sitting there, and one of us said, hey, I've got a great idea. Let's do a really long trip. And if, if you know New England at all, there's, there's really nothing that takes longer than a week to do from, from beginning to end. Um, so for a while, we were, we were looking for the closest river we could do, and it, and it might have been the George River up in Quebec, but um, the logistics of it were, were a little bit above us, you know, the expense of getting up there by train, and then once we got to the top, we didn't know what we were going to do to get back and, and, and so forth. And uh, so anyway, one day, Doug pulled out a clipping from the Quaddy Times down, down East Maine, and, and it was about a canoe trail called the Northern Forest Canoe Trail. And, uh, well, you'll be hearing a little bit more about that later. But um, the idea of connecting multiple rivers into one trip meant that we could actually stick around in New England and, uh, you know, in the Northeast, and um, we could, uh, you know, we could take a, a, a month to do a trip. Um, so uh, we like the idea of the, the, the uh, Northern Forest Canoe Trail, but it, it was just a little too long for us. We didn't think we could get it done in time. Um, so we thought, well, why not embrace the spirit of the Northern Forest Canoe Trail, but just concoct our own trail? So uh, that's what we did. Um, going back to this map, um, I've spent 
a lot of time in, in Maine, or what I call greater Maine, because the river system doesn't really match well with the, the borders of the state. But uh, we've got a lot of information on, um, on trips, and particularly the Penobscot water system, which uh, it covers about this much of the state. It's a, it's a, it's a huge water system. And, um, you know, then I found a bunch of books on um, ancient uh, uh, Native American trails through the area, canoe trails that, that extended extend all the way to the, the White Mountains, um, you know, in New Hampshire to the, to the west and, and on into New Brunswick up, up over this away. Uh, and uh, so, you know, we were pouring around, so, well, what's, what's going to be a good route to take? And uh, about that time, um, I, uh, um, well, first of all, we decided we wanted to end down at my house. It would make any kind of travel arrangements really easy. We just, at the end of the trip, would be there. And uh, we wanted to connect it to something. We wanted it to mean something. So I, I said, well, why not just connect it to the St. Lawrence, which is the end of uh, many of the, uh, you know, many of the famous routes that, uh, you know, that take people into, you know, up into Huron and up into, you know, the trapping uh, areas and stuff like that. So that was all pretty good, but, you know, we didn't have a good idea how to get from the St. Lawrence into what I was familiar with, which is, you know, the, the part of Maine. So uh, I, uh, about that time, I, I bumped into a guy named Mike Krepner. Now, Mike, he was instrumental in, in documenting a whole bunch of these um, canoe routes, uh, you know, the ancient canoe routes, and he, he started a... a a website called nativetrails.org. Unfortunately, he, he, he kind of got out of the business and let it go, but um, him and a couple other guys are actually, um, they kind of uh, started the idea of the Northern Forest Canoe Trail, and they, uh, he, he um, documented some of the, the trails, including the Maliseet Trail, um, and some of the, a lot of the portage routes along the coast of Maine that the um, Indians used to use. Um, Anyway, I bumped into him at, uh, at one of the fairs up in Maine, and, and it was a pretty cool. And he, he turned me on to some of the writings of um, William F. Ganong. Um, he, he, he wrote, uh, he documented uh, much of the, the uh, Micmac and Maliseet trails, uh, canoe trails in New Brunswick, mostly. But the, this is an area, the, this is one of his things. It's, uh, that's the St. Lawrence up there. And he suggested that we either uh, take one of a couple of different routes. And he suggested that we could take Riviere de Loup, which is right here, come up that, uh, Portage over here down, and take the Heidelan Land here and go down the St. Francis River. Um, this is in Quebec. Uh, New Brunswick is just a little bit to the east. Or we could start in uh, Trois Pistoles. Pardon my French. I'm not that good at it. Uh, come up here this portage here over this height of land into uh, uh, Temescoata Lake, which goes down the, the Madawaska River into Edmonston, uh, New Brunswick. Um, he seemed to favor the second route, but uh, we liked the first route because the, the height of land was uh, about 600 feet in elevation, and, and uh, it, it seemed closer to the coast. It was a, a little bit shorter getting up there. So. Um, the other reason that we, we, we decided that we kind of like that is the St. Francis River takes you down to the St. John um, several miles, quite a few miles upstream of Fort Kent, um, which is uh, where the Fish River comes in from the south and empties into, and empties into the St. John, and, and that's the river we wanted to go up, whereas the uh, Madawaska is uh, quite a few miles downstream of that. We would have had to work our way back upstream to get there. Um, so we picked that. We, we could have actually, um, I'm going to try and back up to this other, oh, there we go, perfect. Um, we could have gone, continued, this is the St. John right here. We could have headed on down the St. John about to here, which is Meductic, and taken the Maliseet Trail across and hit the Mattawamkeg and get over to the Penobscot and down that way. Um, we could have done that, uh, but, and that, that was a route that, um, Henry David Thoreau had suggested to him by his uh, Penobscot guide, uh, Joe Polis. And um, he reasoned he didn't really want to do that route because it was too built up. Even way back in the 1800s, it was, you know, there's a lot of population on the St. John River. He, 
he wanted something a little more um, wilderness. So uh, I, I don't know. I think if he had done it, we'd, we'd know where the, uh, the, the roots are for the portages on that. Right now, they're, um, they're, they're kind of difficult to, to figure. But, but that's another story. Um, so uh, we, we, we did like him, and, and we, we decided to travel through the North Main Woods. So up the Fish River, we went, and um, it, it, that took us to a, um, a town at the uh, next height of land that was uh, named Portage, Maine, and where we would pass into the uh, Aroostook watershed. And, uh, well, we figured with a name like Portage, you know, how, how could we not go there on a trip like this? So, so we made it a part of our trip. And, and, uh, and uh, so anyway, that, that, that's our route. We, um, we started at sea level and uh, went up over the first height of land, uh, well, three heights of land. We went through the St. John, um, then the Aroostook, and then finally into the Penobscot watersheds, and, and then uh, went down the Penobscot and ended up back down at sea level again. So there's this big peninsula out there, um, uh, you know, it's New Brunswick and Nova Scotia and, and all that that we, uh, we avoided going around. And, uh, you know, we, we found a route that was actually doable by canoe. So, um, all right, we figured out a route, and it's like, well, let's, um, let's do a little outfitting for this thing. And we're not the kind of guys to, to read about it and ask people who know what they're doing about it and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> we, so, we, you know, we, we, we have to invent our own stuff. So um, here we are. This is my canoe. It's, uh, it's just a 16-foot Royal X boat, weighs a ton, you know, and uh, pretty durable, good thing for people like me to bang about and never really hurt it. And uh, you see my dog uh, there and, and the cat. You can just barely make out part of the cat. They, they're, uh, you know, they're helping. They're helping me outfit the boat. And uh, so first thing you do, of course, the easy part is you put the baler and the paddles and the life jacket in there. And, and I noticed the dog kind of approves of having a life jacket, probably wants to see me again. Whereas I don't even think you can see the cat. The cat's right there just kind of poking around. Um, so next, in goes the portage cart. Um, very essential piece of equipment on a trip like this. The, the, the animals weren't, uh, I, I, they lost interest at this point. They didn't seem to really care at all what I was doing. But um, most of the, you know, in, in Maine, in, in, that, in, that, in the area of the Northeast where I'm from, um, the, most of the ancient portage routes are now called Route 1 or something like that. They, they've all been paved over. They've all turned into a road. And, and so, you know, why carry a boat when you can push a wheelbarrow, you know? So, you know, they, they worked out well for us. Um, then uh, we said, well, let's, we've got a lot of lakes to cross. Why don't we sail across them? So the dog is over there inspecting my uh, sailing rig. It, it weighs about eight pounds. And uh, you, there's a lee board and, and everything, and, and um, it actually actually works quite well. And I, you might notice I snuck in a uh, mast thwart there. It's uh, it's pretty far in the end of the boat, but I didn't want anything to get in the way for other forms of canoeing. And you'll also notice I snuck in an aluminum pole here while you weren't looking. Um, the aluminum poles are nice because you can take them and, and they flex into the side of the boat. And there's a little wooden clip that I, I glued onto my uh, center thwart that holds it out of the way. So when you're paddling along, just, you know, it's not, it's not bumping around. I hate them in the winter. You know, I mean, they, they kill your hands, they, they, they freeze your hands, but uh, they, they do stay out of the way when you're not using them. So uh, all that stuff stowed in there, and you'll notice I, I added a folding mountain bike. Now, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well... You know, where are the animals? I, I couldn't even find them for their opinion on that one. Um, I, I figured it was probably a bad idea. So, so out went the mountain bike, and uh, in went my camping gear. I, I figured it was probably more useful anyway. And uh, one of the things with this trip is, is, is we're not out in the wilderness for weeks at a time. We're going through towns the whole time. You know, we're just kind of kind of sneaking through the back, backyards, everybody, and, and stopping. And, you know, we can restock whenever we want. Well, not whenever, but often. So, uh, you know, I got all my camping gear in here. Um, this is like, uh, well, it's a plastic bucket with a screw-top lid. I added a um, pump line to it. 
You know, it, it's a lot like the, uh, you know, the, the woven baskets that uh, people are used to, but it's, you know, the local materials for me are, you know, five-gallon buckets, and, and um, so that's what I made it out of. And then there's, uh, there's uh, just a bag of food there, and that, that was pretty much our uh, that traveling kit there. That's, that's everything we had. Um, so uh, this is a sail rig set up. Yeah, you know, it is kind of homely, and, and uh, it's uh, really not tried and true, but, but you know, hey, uh, uh, of course it worked, because if you can't tell by now, I, I, I always grin my way through everything, so of course it's going to work. Um, so anyway, off we go. Uh, we start uh, in Riviera de Lue. We got a ride uh, from a guy... Um, on June 1st, 2000, and uh, they brought us up uh, in, in a, in, well, actually in my minivan, dropped us off at Riviera de Lou, and, and that's, that's my buddy Doug in polling. Um, you know, obviously, it's, it's not a place where you need to poll. We were just polling anyway, and that's the seaway there, and it's so wide at that point, you can't even see the other side. What you do see there, that's uh, that horizon there, that's an island halfway across. We're not even halfway across. So it's, it's a substantial uh, body of water there. Anyway, we turned into uh, uh, Riviera de Lou, and yeah, almost immediately we, we end up in the falls. And uh, we say, all right, well, you know, where's our portage? And uh, it, well, it turns out this is looking down the next falls. I mean, this is, there's a hydroelectric plant there. It's, it's massive. And it turns out that the, the, virtually the entire... Um, River is, is just a series of huge falls and, and, and pretty much impassable. And um, lucky for us, the, the, the guy in the van hadn't left yet. So, uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, we, we, we took a mulligan and uh, had him run us up to the, up to the top of that. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, I, I, I always pictured this, and, and I heard it several times over the course of the last day and a half, um, you know, where, where the float plane, uh, you know, leaves you on the edge of the lake and it buzzes over the horizon and, and then, you know, you can't hear it and you can't see it and you're just, you know, it's kind of a mixture of uh, nervousness and sense of adventure. And, well, uh, closest we ever get, and as close as I've ever gotten is, uh, you know, standing there on the shore of the lake in, in some half-built house because it was the only place we could find to, to, to get to the water. And, and uh, seeing the van disappear around the corner, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, there we were. I mean, it, it was quite a, you know, a adventure moment for us. I mean, you know, here we were, we were dumped in a land, and, and, you know, in Quebec, they speak French, and, you know, if, if I try to speak French, it's like they got slapped in the face. So, um, you know, we didn't know how to speak the language, and, and uh, um, all we had was, you know, one of those large-scale maps of Canada, you know, it, it just, and it's like, all right, here we go, you know. Um, so, uh, well, somehow we made it anyway. Um, so we got to the end of the, end of the lake, and we just hoped against hope that the little blue line on this map that we were using actually had a navigable water, and as you can see, um, it did. That's Doug. He's, he's, he's just, that we just left the lake. This is like the first hour of our trip. And, uh, you know, there we were. We, we had a, a month before us. It's something that I, I never had to, to, you know, to do something like this with. And uh, so we pulled over, had a little toast there, right there on the side of the, side of the river, and, and uh, you know, toast the, the adventure about to begin. So we pulled and paddled uh, down the river. Um, this is, uh, it's not the St. Francis River yet. It's uh, some, uh, I, can't, I can't even remember the name of it. It's uh, something in French that I can't pronounce anyway. Um, but uh, we went on down, we, um, we made our way, it took us a couple of days, but we got down to Lac Pohenigamuk, um, which is on the border of um, uh, Quebec and New Brunswick, I think, and part of it is uh, in Maine. So it's kind of like the, the meeting point of, of all the places that we were paddling through. And uh, we got to the lake, and uh, we had a, the wind was blowing uh, behind us, something fierce. Um, it's about an eight-mile-long lake, and uh, we were kind of hesitant to, to 
set out into it, it was, you know, it was afternoon. Um, you know, you, of course, you don't know how big the waves get towards the other end, and, and uh, at the other end of the, the lake, there was, it was all built up, all settled, and we weren't sure we were going to be able to find a place to camp anyway. But we did find a uh, little beach not too far away, and, and, and we pulled into that, and uh, we were very happy to find it. And so what did we do? Well, we set about building ourselves a catamaran rig so that we could sail down the lake in the morning in relative stability, no matter how big the waves got. And we were pretty proud of ourselves with this. You know, we got, took three logs out of the wood and did a lot of lashing and, and so forth. And we got the two, the two boats all rigged up. Took it out that night, paddled around. It seemed like it was pretty solid. And went to bed, feeling good. Got up in the morning, and it was dead calm. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there was, just, there was just no wind at all. And uh, so, well, we figured, well, it might build. So we, we shoved off, and we paddled. We paddled about halfway down the lake, and still not a ripple. So we said, all right, we, we didn't want anyone to actually see us doing that. So we pulled over and, and uh, dismantled the thing, and, and, and off we went. It, it was a good time, though. It, it would have worked, I'm sure. Um, so when we got down to the end of the lake, there's a town of Escort. Um, it's in Maine, and that's where the customs office is. And uh, we got down there, and um, the, the guy, he... he he came out, and he made us come into his office, and, you know, uh, geez, you know, are we in trouble or, or what? But, but no, he just wanted us to point out our route on his wall map. So we did, when uh, he was pretty happy, and we talked for a while, and, and uh, we left there. That was actually the first person that even noticed that we were out, you know, doing anything, any sort of a trip. Um, off we went down the river. It's a beautiful river, by the way. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's protected in a way... Um, it's just not long enough to be worth traveling to. So nobody does. It's, um, it's it, you know, the St. Francis, it's just, it's got beautiful little uh, class twos and threes that are, are easy to run. And um, it just goes through some, some really beautiful country. Um, we went down, took a couple of days again to get down there, um, hit the St. John River. And uh, I, I, I wish I had some pictures, but when you're sailing your canoe, you've got, well, you're using your, your paddle for a rudder, unless you want to get really complicated, but it's really easy just to use the paddle to rudder. You got the lee board down, that's not a problem. Um, but you got the sail, and you've got the, 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 the main sheet that you're hanging on to. You can try to hold it under your foot, but it always slides out. So you're always holding on to that, and you're holding on to your paddle with two hands, and you're going along pretty good. And I just never managed to pull out the camera while there was anything going on that was, you know, not just somebody sitting in a boat with a sail up, you know, and, and limps and hanging sails. So I apologize for that. One day I will get one. Actually, I do have one, but it's from a different trip with different sails, and it wouldn't look right. Um, so anyway, uh, we sailed down to St. John, and, and from St. Francis down to uh, Fort Kent is uh, a beautiful stretch of river. It's pretty wide, pretty shallow. Um, class, you know, class twos and threes, rapids again, um, but you know, you can you can pick several routes through it. it it's really nice, um, and we did. We set up our sails, and and uh, you know, I know against goes against all all wisdom, but we we sat there and and put up the sails, and we just ruddered down the uh, down down the um, river, and you know, through the rapids and stuff like that, and. Uh, you know, the beauty was is that sail was pulling us through the rapids so we could actually get away with it. Um, so anyway, uh, we hit Fort Kent, and um, we, we uh, pulled up the river, um, up the Fish River. It's a really beautiful river, another beautiful river. And we're still in northern Maine. We're not even, we haven't even gotten far, far south enough to, um, to hit the, uh, the north Maine woods. So... Uh, we went up through there. We we went up through uh, uh, some some uh, some nice rapids. We hit some nice beautiful lakes, and um, eventually we got up to Portage Lake, pulled into town, and uh, while we were in town, uh, well that's that's pulling up pulling up the river, and uh, well when we got to Portage, we, it was the first chance to use our Portage carts, and uh, the, you know you can see that's uh, he doesn't look like he's struggling too hard there. Um, we pulled into a parking lot of the diner, and uh, this woman, she, she comes over and, and she says, well, look at those cute little wheels, you know. 
she's making fun of us. So I made her come over and try it out. And I said, no, don't you check it out. And, and sure enough, you know, she said she was pretty impressed with that. Well, it turned out that uh, she, her husband was one of the retired uh, game wardens in town. And, and I say one of because uh, not only there were two retired game wardens, but the, uh, the uh, current game warden also lived in town. And, uh, well, seeing as we were the first ones that anyone can remember portaging through the town of Portage, um, <laughs> You know, we, we were kind of minor celebrities, and they took us around, they showed us, they bought us all our meals and everything else. We had, we had a real good time. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we had to say goodbye. We are on a trip, and uh, went over and uh, uh, took a four-mile portage down the road, and, and uh, it was a dirt road, though. It wasn't paved. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we went down the, uh, the Little Machaya stream and hit the Aroostook, and took a boat three days pulling up, pulling up the Aroostook. Um, we were running out of water, and, uh, um, y you know, it, it was just, I mean, you look at it, you're trying to pull up there, and you just keep bumping into things, and, and it, it's, when the water's that deep, it's pretty easy just to wade up it. So we talked to different people, and uh, the news was pretty grim, um, but uh, we were going on, we, you know, kept heading up, heading up, and, uh, the people we bumped into in Masardis and Ashland, they, they, didn't, uh, they didn't really have any good advice for us. They, they didn't really know what we were about, so it was kind of hard for them to, to give us any, any useful advice. But uh, going along, and um, uh, I, we, we came to this really big island in the middle of the river, and I, I told Doug, you, you go left, and I'll go right, and uh, we'll meet at the top, you know. So off I go. I'm, I'm up on the little skinny side with all the current, and... and uh, I go around a couple of bends and I hear some clunking going on and I'm thinking, oh, that's Doug. He's already coming back down to meet me. But uh, no, it was, it was an old man named Rudy. Um, and he stood there in his grumman, uh, you know, short grumman with a wooden pole in his hand and, and he, he confessed he was 83 years old. And he's just out fly fishing and pulling and stuff by himself. And uh, well, I asked Rudy for any info he might have about um, our plans which was to go up this La Pum Cake stream and, and uh, carry over to Grand Lake Savoy's, which is the top of the Penobscot. Um, so, well, his news was pretty grim, and, and uh, he just laughed at me and said, <laughs> and let me see if I can get this right. Years ago, you could go up La Pum Cake stream to Cary Brook, then on over to the Deadwater at the top of Grand Lake Savoy's. Archie Junkins used to have a camp up in there, kept the trail clear. Not any more, though. After the spruce budworm got in there, they cut the whole area. Nothing but brush and alders the whole way. And of course, after they did that, there was nothing to hold the water back. Cary Brook is all dried up, and La Pum Keg is only a trickle. Nope, he laughed. You don't want to go there unless you really want to rough it. You'll be dragging your boat through 10 miles of alders with nothing but mud under your feet. So, of course, you know, this is Maine, right? And when he was done laughing, he says, No, sir, you can't get there from here. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, obviously we did get there because uh, we're not still sitting around in Oxbow Flats with Rudy. Um, but we met a Met a feller at the, uh, at the top of where we were going, and this is Lester Junkins. And it was his uncle that uh, used to keep the, keep the uh, trail clear. And so, you know, we really had a good, a good time to meet the, the, the local folks, you know, the local character in there. And uh, Lester helped us out. Um, someone come along with, a, with one of them fancy gadgets called a cell phone, and soon enough we had a uh, main guide to help us uh, once again. Um, take a, a Rob Roy, I call him. That's where you, you know, you rely on the local folks to, to trundle you around to the next fun part. And uh, so anyway, they took us up to Grand Lake Savoy's, and um, it, we, we went on, to, I mean, there we are. We're at elevation 730, the highest point of the trip. And pretty much it, it was just a, um, a downriver trip from there. And uh, here we are, uh, there's Doug. He's well, he's showing really pretty bad uh, um, polling skills there. He's got, it, he's got the pole across him. If that thing gets hung up, you know, he's hanging onto that and his boat's uh, leaving without him. Um, but it's easy to do. Okay. So anyway, uh, 
Uh, we went on down through that. That was, that was low water. We were happy about that. It's pretty heavy duty current in there. Uh, went on down to the gorge, the Savoy's Gorge, and um, then uh, made it down to the east branch of the Penobscot. Look at those hardwoods, huh? We're out of the, uh, we're out of the spruce, and uh, from there on out, it was just, uh, you know, just a beautiful country. And not that spruce isn't, but uh, it's a whole different, different area. Um, so anyway, um, we entered, uh, soon entered the uh, Penobscot River, um, the Penobscot uh, Reservation. Um, Penobscot Indians, they gave away, at one point, all the lands west of the river, and then another point, they gave away all the lands east of the river. But it turns out there's hundreds of islands within the river, and they, they still own all of that, and, and they keep it really nice. It's just a beautiful wilderness, and you can get lost in there and never see the shoreline. Um, so we, we got to enjoy more wilderness all the way down to um, Old Town. Um, once you get to Old Town, it, it gets a little bit industrialized. And uh, this, is, uh, this was the last dam we portaged over. We were counting on six dams, but um, turned out we only had to do five. One had already been torn out. Um, since then, two more dams have been torn out, including this one. And that's, uh, that's thanks to the Penobscot River Restoration Trust. Um, if you look at this, on the left, you can see uh, in, in red, the red highlighting, that's the current uh, extent uh, that um, sea-run fish can, can spawn, including uh, the endangered Atlantic salmon. And when they're done, all of this land, uh, all of this uh, area is going to be uh, accessible to them. So we're really hopeful for that. And um, they're raising money now. They've already taken down a couple of dams. They've already done a lot. Um, and uh, I'm doing a fundraiser for that myself, actually, and there's some some funny looking brochures out there. You might pick one up. It says Spawn of Hal on it, which is, they call me Hal a lot. That's like my trail, trail name. And, and I'm going to, oops, I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to go up this, up to this point. I'm going to pull up to there. It's about 125 miles for the fundraiser. So I'd, I'd love it if, if, you, if you got tickled by that and wanted to, wanted to uh, um, donate. And uh, there you go. We made it to the Atlantic, and uh, we called it good. Um, later, we, uh, we continued the trip on back to my house, but that was a, that's another trip for another time. And, and we ended here, and I guess I'm going to end here, too. So,